If you watched my video for number seven, we talked a lot about verbs and tenses and how we should think about a question. So in this case, we have a very similar set of answer choices to number seven. We have a list of verbs in different tenses. So following my own advice, what I'm supposed to think about first is singular versus plural verbs because that's the easier thing to usually determine and, and the more important thing for most of those questions. So in this case, we don't have really any singular or plural choices. So coming, that's not really singular or plural. It doesn't end in S. It's just like a word, you know, they are coming or um, he is coming, right? Depending on the number of things we're saying, it doesn't change the word. Coming is going to still be there whether it's one person or two people. Same thing with like which came. Like it's not, there's no, it's the singular and plural become and comes. Once we go into the past tense, we don't really have that singular plural anymore. Um, to come and is in the infinitive, so that kind of stands alone, and came is the past tense again, so that's kind of fine. It doesn't have a singular plural. It's the same for both. So basically what this means is the singular plural rule doesn't matter. We tested for it, we looked at it, we thought about it, and it doesn't really apply. Which means that now we can talk about the tense of the verbs, and that means we need to be finding symmetry. So most of the time when we do symmetry questions, we're able to find um, a symmetrical word, another word that's supposed to be in the same tense. We can find that word in the same sentence as the word we're being asked about. But here that doesn't really help us. Um, maybe the only thing is, is the word using does in fact match with coming. If we look at the sentence, that's not really what's going on. More than 60% of the contribution coming from commercial goods and services created by companies using space technology. Well, if I talk like that, it, it sounds like I'm starting a thought, but never ending it, right? More than 60% of the contribution coming from commercial goods and services created by companies using space-related technology. What? There's no real action here. And that's often the case with the ing is it it creates a problem because it kind of takes away what makes it a sentence it kind of turns it into a clause and we don't really want that it's a long clause but it's not an actual sentence there's no direct action so that that verb didn't help that symmetry didn't get us what we wanted but we are still looking for a match right this is it's not just that one um tense is going to be right because it sounds better. It's going to be right because we can point to something else in another sentence in this case and prove it. So we're, if we start beforehand, it says a report by the Space Foundation estimated that NASA contributed $180 billion to the economy in 2005. More than 60% of the contribution, well, it's past tense. So how about came from commercial goods and services created by companies using space-related technology. So, and then this translates as excellent returns from an agency that received approximately $17.7 .7 in tax dollars in 2014. So there's a few verbs that are all kind of in the past tense, and this sentence is kind of fit among them. And so that lets us say, oh, okay, this is also supposed to be in the past tense. Maybe you just kind of picked up on that through sound and it sounded better. That's okay, but more, as much as possible, you really want to be able to point to other words and say, this is my match. This is the thing that proves my answer and my hunch correct. Um, it's a little safer and it makes it less likely that you fall for a trap, which they could try to, you know, throw on you. So just, just be careful. Um, but when there's a grammar rule, we always want to try to use the rule to prove our answer so that we are more confident in that answer.